Welcome to our eSignal Weekly Forex Forecast. My name is Jay Norris. I teach trading at Trading University. We need to remind you, as always, that trading involves risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. The first market we're going to be covering will be the Australian US dollar. You're looking at a daily chart of the Australian US dollar. Here, I think it's best to put it in perspective with our ratio. You can see here the Aussie, the, the five days up um, while the, the majority of these patterns are still down. Basically, that means that even as a short term trader, we're still interested in selling rallies. I want to show you the chart though. See that little orange line there? Let me pop down to a four hour chart. There you can see a little bit better. That's an RTT level right there, resistance level right there. You can see the market respecting that. You get a couple of closes above that. Wouldn't surprise me if we see a continuation of this little short covering rally here. One reason I think you probably had a comeback here Friday is just because that's it. It's Friday late in the week. Markets tend to have counter trend moves. So it doesn't surprise me you didn't have follow through on the downside in the Aussie even after it hit resistance because it's just late in the week. So I, I would definitely be keying off of this level here. If prices continue to hold below it, then we'd be interested in, in sell signals. On the other hand, you get a couple of closes above it. And back to the daily chart, you know, that just means you'll have a potential continuation of the, this little short covering rally right here. It's always a great idea to go back and look at as long a time frame chart as you can. We teach at Trading University that you analyze the long term charts, but you trade the shortest term charts. That's very simply because the shortest term charts are going to yield the, the lowest risk for you. That being said, let's let's pan all the way out to the big picture. And, and here's where I love the, the futures, too. And this is why I love V-Signal, too, because we can go back in history. Your more experienced traders, they're more familiar with the futures. This is the cash chart. This is the Aussie cash chart. Let's go with a futures chart here, and we'll see how far back we can go and get the big picture. And there it is. That's the picture I'm looking for. See the futures charts. Um, they're going to go all the way back to uh, 2000. So you're, you're going back pretty far there. And that's the Aussie dollar. That's the Australian future. And you can see, you know, there's there's a lot of room down below. And that's why it's very important to see that big picture, to put everything in perspective. But, you know, even on this monthly chart, you, you can see that, you know, you're in a bit of a sideways range here. So back down to a daily chart, you know, that that's probably where we want to be fixated on right now and and I tell you what you're in a market where it can really go either way and and for my money that's not the the, the best market to trade back to a four hour chart here you get a couple of closes above that orange line on the cash chart then we're, we're going to be in a situation where we're both uh, selling rallies and buying dips so uh, Aussie may not be the best trading vehicle if you close above there because you're probably going to go sideways next mark we'll take a look at is the chief the dollar Swiss Swissy. Let me pan out to a daily chart here. And there you go. You know, we, 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 we talked about how the Aussie broke out above 90 even. And, and that's a good thing for, for long-term bulls in this market. You see that purple line? That marks a 50% retracement. You take this up move and it retraced 50% and you found support on there. Trade a little bit below it. You probably punched out stops. Uh, eventually it did hold and, and you were able to accelerate out of there. So we've drawn here this is a 50 percent level of this up move this impulse move retrace 50 percent so we're going to take this la latest impulse move and we'll mark that 50 percent retracement there and it gives us a, a area here oh uh, right around 89 and three quarters that's going to be a natural area where we would look for support for this market wouldn't surprise me if uh, if you do start to if price starts to fish around down that way What's interesting about the dollar Swiss here is you did shift the 10 day lower. So if you're a short term trader in the Swissy, you trade that, that 5 to 25 day pattern, you can see the majority of them are down. So that's going to green light selling rallies in the Swissy. Swissy, not necessarily a, a alpha dog here. It's not necessarily a leader. I think you got a key off of the dollar index and the, and the euro uh, itself. Next market, dollar index. Speaking of the, the, the big dog here, the dollar index. Here you can see the dollar index, you see that same breakout here, uh, you broke out above 81 even, and look at how the dollar index is still basically going sideways. If you look at the the ratio here, our risk tolerance threshold ratio here, which breaks down markets into their, their patterns, you can see all these short-term patterns are still bullish. The dollar index can't even shift that five-day lower. 
and we talked about that last week, you know, just because you get a little bit of a correction, that doesn't mean you're, you want to go short. You don't want to go counter trend trade because guess what? Markets can consolidate sideways like we talked about last week. And that's exactly what we're seeing here in the dollar index. Dollar index just basically consolidating sideways. You can't even, you haven't even bent that five day pattern lower yet. So short term patterns are still bullish here. So you know, that's telling. Well, it's telling us that you, you've got a lot of underlying strength in this market. It's, it's going to be interesting to see as the U.S. is going we're into the back to school season from a retail standpoint and, and that's the time when the parents are going out they're they're shopping around they're they're getting clothes for their kids they're, they may be getting furniture for the kids dorms if the kids are going away and at that same time they'll see things they may need to they may want to improve their own home so you know they go out to buy the kids stuff and, and they end up buying themselves things too and and that's that's a trend that the retailers count on so we'll have to see how that goes you know if you get a good back to school season that's going to set up the u.s economy is going to lead it right into the christmas season and hey retail is so important for the u.s it makes up two-thirds of uh, the gdp two-thirds of the economic output in the u.s so that's what we would look for potentially a strong back to school season which will continue to fuel the rally here in the dollar next market the euro the euro is in a funny place. It's in kind of a catch-22 here because bad economic news in Europe is going to be bad for the euro. Good economic news in the U.S. is going to be bad for the euro also. But at the same time, if you get bad economic data, if the U.S. economy were to, to slow down, that would be worse for Europe, right? The U.S. is in a, a position where you know they could they could probably weather another slowdown. You saw how uh, the economy weathered that that slow down in the beginning of this year US economy the stock market really didn't even break a sweat the market came back strong that wouldn't be the case for Europe though uh, a, a slow down the US economy would be bad for Europe uh, just as a slow down Europe is gonna be bad for Europe so it's kinda of lose lose here I guess where I'm getting at to me any bad US economic data needs to really be looked at hard for a, a potential buying opportunity in the dollar selling opportunity in the euro let's take a look at that big picture futures traders they tend to be a little bit more experienced that they understand that the, the futures market has been around a lot longer than uh, the, the cash retail forex market let's take a look at the euro futures here from a long-term perspective there it is now you start to see the potential downside for the euro right look at that so you know 120 long term it's been down there several times over the past decade or so you know if you break that it, that opens the door to 110 so that's that's not unheard of at all when you, when you look at the the big picture here and that's a monthly chart of the euro futures you start to see that the potential for downside in that market and that's why I like you know you have to cover the futures I like the futures because uh, for a number of reasons but you need to see that big picture that's why I love e-signal because you get that that long term uh, that long term view of things and yeah, here's the gold market Gold, another one similar to the Aussie, where long term, I think it's still bearish, but short term, you're, you could go into a sideways pattern here. Here's the, our gold RTT ratio, and you can see that really says it all. Five, pa five day pattern down, 10 day pattern up, 25 down, 50 up. So basically, you're in a sideways market here. We think that there's, there's better opportunities in trending markets than necessarily uh, counter trending markets good trader though uh, there's nothing wrong with being in a position where you're buying dips and selling rallies you don't have to wait so long between trades so if you like uh, counter trend like sideways markets the gold market uh, may be a good uh, vehicle to trade here's the big picture monthly gold chart there you go wow look at that big big rally uh, again I, i'm i'm struck by the fact that you are in a downtrend and that if you did take out support here there's probably a lot of room down below in the gold market you're definitely in in a a bear phase from from this standpoint and, and we're big believers that the pattern on the chart is absolutely a reflection of underlying fundamentals no doubt about it it's economic fundamentals that creates market movement the pattern on the chart is absolutely a reflection of that once you understand that you don't have to necessarily focus on the news that's creating those fundamentals because you can have total faith in the pattern on the chart is a reflection of that it's going to free you up to uh, to do other things in life too once you realize that you can focus on the the pattern how markets move more so than than why they're going to move because no one has a crystal ball no one can tell the future but we do understand the power of the, the pattern being a reflection of what's happening out there
Last market we'll cover is the dollar yen. There's the dollar yen. You know, we've said it a hundred times. We like it at 101. We love it at par. And that was true. The market held. You had a little double bottom just above 101. That held. And, and we, you know, like this market long term. Also, let's pan out to a monthly here. And we still think there's more upside. You know, we think you're going to see you're going to get up towards 106 again, uh, if not a little bit higher than that. So for our money, we still think there's room up above in the the dollar yen there it is and you can see this dip was covered pretty quickly and the market started its ascent again so a lot depending on the u.s economy going into the back to school season leading up to the the big christmas retail season i'll leave you with this thought i know i've mentioned it to you in the past but uh, boy it just makes so much sense to me this first sentence holding on to an outcome creates an energy blockage boy think about that research that a little bit Basically, what it's telling you is how dangerous opinions are in trading versus just having a method that can measure how markets move and going along with that method. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next week.